It's good to be here again. I want to finish this uh, as a part two. Uh, the title was Prayer Mixed with Incense, but it had a subtitle also, and that subtitle is uh, With Us in Trials, Not Delivering Us from It. And um, so we went through a bunch of scriptures last time, and my hope is <clears throat> that I don't have to put you through a part three uh, in relationship to what I'm sharing, so I'm going to jump right in. Um, in uh, Matthew chapter 4, uh, we'll be talking about verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> and here, I mean, this is Jesus' first real uh, foray into being known and being in ministry and whatever. And uh, verse 1 begins with, Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And so there is... Um, there is this thing that God does where he allows the Spirit of God to lead us into situations that involve temptations of the devil. Uh, temptation is not sin. Given in to temptation is. So, um, <clears throat> so the scripture says, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights uh, afterwards, he was hungry. He was suffering or hungry because he was doing something for God. And then that's when the tempter comes. That's when he comes. And he's, his part is to mess with us, and our part is to go with the Lamb of God and go with the Spirit of God. And so um, in all of these temptations that come, um, God doesn't deliver Jesus out of it. He leaves him in there, but he's with him in that. And, he is, and Jesus is with the Father in, that, in all these temptations. And the devil, devil even uses scriptures and starts quoting scriptures to Jesus. And um, I like, uh, the, it says, uh, the devil said, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. So this is the devil quoting basic religious scriptures to say, get God to deliver you from the circumstance. Get God to deliver you from it. Get him to do something for you. <clears throat> and Jesus uh, said unto him, It is written, um, uh, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Okay, a couple of things here. Temptation, let's say I wrote a temptation, tempting God. Don't push him to deliver when he wants you to be with him. That's to tempt God, is that the devil's tempting him to, to get out of the situation. And he's, and Jesus is saying, uh, that's, you know, you're trying to get me to get him to deliver me instead of me being able to be with him in this. The other thing is that Jesus says, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Uh, his God, the devil's God, was the Father. And then he rebelled against it. So Jesus didn't say in general, he's saying that directly to the devil, saying you, you shouldn't be tempting the Lord thy God. You shouldn't be doing this stuff. And then uh, verse 8, and the, again the devil taketh him up. So the devil's taken him. This is not, this is not a journey he's taken. This is a, devil, a, a journey that the devil is bringing him through and to. <clears throat> and um, uh, so again, uh, verse 10, Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Again, he's telling him, Look, you're, you're messed up here. You're not worshiping him. You're just trying to... To convince me to do what you did, jump out of the circumstances, get free from your what you considered bondage and all this stuff instead of being with the Lord in those situations. Um, so uh, he's saying, Lord, remove the temptation. Um, and all this is happening right to Jesus right after he starts his ministry. Um, and then the last verses there says, uh, verse 11, then the devil leaveth him and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. The angels came to minister to Jesus after he had been with the Father in the trial, not delivered from the trial, but was able to be with the Father in the trial and not look for external deliverance. Okay, so now we want to get back into the thing that we started with and the, the wording that I use, and that is incense and prayers. And um, so I want, we well, let's put it this way. We read... Psalm 141, verse 1 and 2, and it talked about uh, our prayers being as incense. And then we also read 
Revelation 8, verse 3 and 4, which talked about an altar, the altar of incense, and prayers was offered upon it, but it, and it was offered before the throne. Um, and, and verse 4 says, And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God. It didn't really say that the prayers ascended up. It didn't really say it. You have to look at those verses. Revelation 8, 3, verse 4, it says that the incense that came with the prayers ascended up. So there's a difference, and that's what we're trying to trying to deal with here. So uh, Daniel's situation, and all the situations I'm going to give you now uh, will be about prayer, and they will show how they're, in, they're mixed with incense, uh, their prayers are. So Daniel, Daniel 6, and starting with verse 7, but we're not going to read it all because it's a lot here. But you know the situation basically that, that Daniel would pray every day. He would pray every day to his Lord. And so the other people were jealous of Daniel, and they were jealous of his, his relationship with the king. So they got the king to make a decree that if he prayed, which he, you know, they figured he probably would, that he'd be thrown in the lion's den. And they made it a decree that can't be altered. And uh, <clears throat> I love verse 10. And when David knew that the writing was signed, <laughs> he went into his house and he prayed. I mean, that, that's, he's, not, he's not going, oh, no, I need, now that I know, I need to get out of this. If I hadn't have known, I wouldn't have known how to m manipulate the circumstances to be delivered and made free. It's, no, he goes right back in there and he starts praying again, kneeled down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. And um, as he did aforetime. <clears throat> and um, so these men came together and they found Daniel was praying. So they went to the king and they complained and griped and said, he's breaking your commandments when in fact it's their manipulations that, that has brought this about. Um, and it says uh, that, the, that the king was displeased within himself because he knew these guys are, kind of use a real popular um, uh, Greek word for them. They were creeps. Anyway, and, um, and he was displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. The king set his heart on Daniel to deliver him from the lion's den. I wonder if it's going to happen. Praise God. Maybe that's what Daniel's praying. No, it's not. Um, and then down in uh, the end of verse 16, Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. See, it's always got to get you out of it, get you out of the circumstances. And Daniel's, he's at peace going into him. Uh, and then, uh, so the king spent the night fasting. <laughs> you know, he's, he's still trying to get him delivered. And uh, <clears throat> when, when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Okay, so now, since you can't get delivered from the lions, did he deliver you in the midst of the lions? This is what the king wants to know. Okay, and um, and of course we know the story on that. So it, so he didn't die. Um, and remember, Daniel prayed regularly three times a day. So who knows? He was probably in there praying, doing the same thing he always did, with the Lord, and knowing my prayers are not just prayers; they're going up with incense. Because he's staying in the situation and he's being with the Lord in there. Remember last week, last time, uh, we talked about the three Hebrew children. If they had just got deliverance, they never would have saw the fourth man. They never would have saw one like the Son of, of God walking around in the midst of it with them. And um, uh, so then, of course, they, the king gets mad and he throws in the guys who made him come up with that scheme. As soon as they hit the ground in there, the lions ate them up. Okay, so, um, so the king makes a decree. He's the living God. He's the, um, you know, he's the right God, the God that is with you in the trial. 
not just always delivering you. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> and I don't think Daniel was noticing the lines. I don't think he was swallowed up of the circumstances in the earth. I think he was with the Lord and swallowed up of the Lord. And what if he was looking at his face, then change is happening more and more. This circumstance with the lions would have caused him to be conformed more into the image of the Lord. So, all right. So I am going so fast, but we only got two more scriptures left. So uh, John chapter 17, verse 1. So this one is uh, Jesus's prayer for his disciples. And then the last one is going to be Jesus's prayer for himself. Okay. John 17, verse 1, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may glorify thee. Give me the ability to glorify you. Um, and then verse 13 through 15, and he's not going to be praying, take me out of this situation. <clears throat> and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they, that they might have jo my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Okay, well, Daniel was kept from the evil. Uh, all of the examples we used last week, but they still went through the trial. All right, so, um, well, that was fast. So we're in John, John 12, uh, 27 through 29. And uh, this is now Jesus' prayer for himself, for himself. Okay, the other one we just did, that was his prayer for his disciples. This is starting with verse 27. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me, save me from this hour. But... For this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name in the trial. It doesn't say in the trial, but that's what he's talking about because he's in the trial, okay? Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spoke to him. All right, so... What is our understanding of prayer? Is it thunder or incense? Is it, is it God moving in thunder and in power and getting you out of that situation? Or is it God moving in incense that you can be with him and it's a sweet savor to him? One is us getting out of all everything. The other one is him getting the Lord in us, in that spirit, and being with him in that spirit. Um, so I wrote a couple of things here. Incense does not come from the fact of our really sweet-smelling prayers. Because mm. a lot of people think, oh, that was a good prayer I really prayed. I, I guess it's probably really sweet-smelling to the Lord. No, it's not even in that category. It's in this category of being able to be with Him in your circumstances until... Instead of trying to get out. I mean, read Revelation again and where it talks about that. That's the book of Revelation. It doesn't get much worse than that. Okay. And then it comes, it, uh, no, the incense comes from prayers that are soaked in death with Christ. Going into being with him, being with that lamb spirit, being in the, in the spirit of I'm already dead. Christ is my life. So I'm going to give the Father Christ. That's how I live. That's how I believe, therefore I said it, and I'll do it. Uh, they do not try to change circumstances, but are with him in them. And so, basically, the idea of the incense is, and I'm not sure where we are on the time, <laughs> but, but the, the, the thing with the incense and the book of Revelation is that there was all of this tragedy going on in the earth. I mean, the, the devil was loosed and he could defeat the saints and, and, and he made war with them and killed them. I mean, you, you can read all the different verses that says that. And in the midst of all of that, see, we sometimes miss, miss um, certain things. We just see the bad circumstances that, that are going on and it just, you know, it scares us and whatever. But in the midst of all of that, there is this 
with them. There's this sweet incense going up with their prayers. Well, what, you know, what is incense? It's something you burn. What is a sacrifice? It's something you burn. It is, uh, the incense is changing its form. It is being set on fire and it's losing its solid form and it's becoming the sweet savor unto the Father by Christ because that's what it says in 2 Corinthians. That it's the sweet savor of Christ to the Father. And so um, that's, to get incense, there has to be a death to self. Okay, what does that mean? In all of these situations, the death to self is, I am not going to use my, my particular superpowers to get out of this, to manipulate my way, to do uh, the thing that every normal human being would do, which is get out of it. I am going to reckon myself dead and Christ is my life, and I want the Father to get his Son out of me. That's what my desire is. That's what my hope is. That's what I live for. That's what I die for, and I do it regularly so that every circumstance is a circumstance that we may, we may glorify the Father by Christ. Now, did you notice the several scriptures that we read? That in all of those prayers and times, and they all were prayers at the end there that I read, prayer situations, did you notice that it had to do with glorifying the Father with His Son? Especially John 17. Glorify me with, you know, with yourself. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this time to be together. Thank you for this time to really move in close to you and move away from our circumstances and all the things that we struggle with and to say, I will be with you in, in whatever. And Father, to give us that heart to, to be about those that are incense burners. We're just the, the thing that holds the incense, but Christ is that incense and he lives in us and he gives us uh, to be with you, you and him. And Father, we want incense to rise out of us when we're, not, not when we're happy and everything is perfect, but to rise out of us when in those situations, instead of thinking of ourselves, thinking of our, uh, uh, how bad things are, to, to, and they, are, they can be horribly bad, like Jesus about to go to the cross, but that we have an opportunity, not an obligation, an opportunity to be with you by the Lamb, Father, to actually offer up the Lamb in a real way, not the shadow world of the Jews, but in a real way, in real life situations, and glorify you in this earth during these days. Thank you for that opportunity, Father. We're humbled and we love you, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.